Hola amigos, una nueva edición de Auto 060. Seguimos, uh, vamos a seguir hablando en este show eh, del Auto Show Los Ángeles 2013. Ya la semana pasada tuvimos bastante información al respecto. Ya tuvimos, estuvimos hablando con el CEO de la Maserati, estuvimos hablando sobre los nuevos modelos de la Porsche, eh, la Macan. Eh, también tuvimos la experiencia de manejo con el Mercedes-Benz B-Class Electric, el BMW i3. Así que una gran cantidad de información, pero obviamente un solo show no fue suficiente para poner toda la información que se ha generado en el Auto Show Los Ángeles 2013. Y en esta edición eh, vamos a tener todavía más información. Así que bueno, sin perder más tiempo, we're going to switch back to English to talk to Avi Bassett Hefferman and Peter Valdez Devena from CNNMoney.com. How are you, Avi? How are you, Peter? Very well, thank you. We're great. I'm recovered from a week in LA covering the show. <laughs> I know. Recovering. Yeah, and this this is just starting now. We have Detroit, uh, Chicago, and then New York, where we'll see you in your home turf there. Yep, exactly. It, it's we start in with uh, LA and go right through March. It's going to be a busy auto show season, I think. Ex exactly. So uh, since uh, it's CNN. Uh, Money.com, uh, I wanted to focus the, the segment on talking about money specifically, and we saw pretty interesting cars there, and uh, one that uh, caught uh, the attention of a lot of people is the 65,000 figure, which is the, the price for the most expensive Kia and the least expensive Maserati Ghibli. Which one would you guys buy? That's tough. I mean, I, I have, well, first of all, I should say I have not yet driven the K900. I, I have driven the uh, Hyundai Equus, which is sort of a close relative. But I haven't driven the Kia yet. I have driven the Maserati. I think the Maserati, I mean, I loved it, but it's not for everybody. It, it's it's a smaller car about the size of a Mercedes-Benz E-Class. But unlike a lot of electric cars, you really feel the road. You feel the steering. Uh, you hear the engine. It makes a lot of really cool noises. But it's much more of a driver's kind of car than a lot of mid-sized uh, sedans like that. The K900, the Kia is going to be a very large car, a big sort of comfortable cruising type of car, I would imagine. Uh, for a lot of people, that might be a better way to spend their money if you don't mind spending $65,000 for something with a Kia badge on it, which some people might have a hard time getting. Yeah, over. and uh, to be honest, the K900 badge, that looks a lot like a Mercedes-Benz badge to me, <laughs> the style of the letters at least. Avi, do you have any preference on those? Yeah, actually, you know, I think the interesting thing that Kia is doing here is similar to what, what Hyundai did and trying to get into sort of the luxury market by uh, going after that buyer that's looking for the value um, and the same kind of ride and the same kind of features that they might find in a BMW or an Audi. And the question really is, is, you know, are people going to buy something without sort of that, that brand history behind it? Um, you know, some of the features that it has, luxury uh, interior, things like leather and, you know, an optional V8, Um, it's a rear-wheel drive. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. Um, personally, when I drove the, the Ghibli, I was not in love with it. It has a great sound, but um, it actually, after a while, after driving it um, on a rather long road trip, it just it, it gets a little tiresome. So I think, um, you know, I'll have to wait and see what the, what the Kia K900 looks like and feels like and kind of go from there. But it, it, is, an interesting, it is an interesting entry into this, into this field. Yeah, I drove the Ghibli actually last uh, week, uh, very shortly, for about uh, half an hour or so, and uh, so I didn't have the experience of a long trip, and uh, I agree, it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, I like the noise, but I don't know after a long time uh, how it would be. And uh, you mentioned, Abby, uh, history and names and all that, and Porsche came up with the new SUV, a compact SUV, the Macan, for $70,000 starting for the Turbo. Uh, I think uh, the, the controversy of uh, Porsche making an SUV is long gone since... Uh, the Cayenne debuted 10 years ago. So this is a hit for Porsche, I think, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful car. I, I you know, I wasn't really in love with the with the back end of it, but I really, really like sort of what I'm seeing coming out of Porsche. It'll be interesting because I think that they're putting a big bet on the Macan. Um, you know, they're hoping to sell anywhere from 50 to 55,000 units per year, which is actually quite a few. Um, you know, although the Cayennes have done so well, In 2012, they sold around 78,000 Cayennes, which is their biggest portion of their sales. Um, and it, it really, you know, the question is going to remain whether or not people who own those Cayennes are going to want a baby Cayenne, the, the Macan, to sort of grace their garages as well. But I do really, I am really actually excited to get inside that car. I, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I think, you know, it doesn't offer any more seating than the Cayenne. That's interesting. Most companies that offer a smaller and a larger and smaller SUV, usually one of them has a third row of seats for most companies. 
Porsche is not doing that, but I bet I think the Cayenne is a lot of fun to drive. I think it's the most fun to drive SUV on the market today. So I think the Macan is just going to take that to the next level and be even more fun. Now, granted, you know, Porsche does tend to make a rather expensive product once you get all the An options. Up, done, so An that's up. <laughs> I think what Autoblog just posted something. They went on the configurator, uh, their online configurator and figured out you could, you could, you could spec out a $110,000 Macan. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So the options can make these things go crazy expensive, but I am betting you that there is not going to be any more fun to drive SUV on the road yeah, than I, that one. And I'm I really actually, looking forward to it. I actually uh, talked to one of the Porsche drivers, uh, factory drivers, pa uh, Patrick Long there, and uh, he, he has already driven it, obviously, and he says it's a lot more fun to drive than the Cayenne. Uh, one, uh, what might be fun to watch around the city, uh, I don't know if somebody is going to buy it, but uh, did you see the you are buying Puma at the entrance of the LR show? Would you spend $1.1 oh. $1 million for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of couldn't miss that one. Um, that I, I, oh man, <laughs> you don't even that know how to be, say it. I, I've seen some ugly cars. <laughs> that was possibly a contender for the ugly. I mean, it looked like a giant wad of used chewing gum with wheels on it. It was the weirdest looking thing I have ever seen. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Did someone actually think that this is good looking? I, I mean, it was. It was just so. Bizarre. It looked like a, a some kind of idea of a parade float. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, I guess somebody thought they could sell one because they are making it, right, Abby? But I don't know if yeah, they can. Yeah, they uh, they're actually. I guess I, I was reading about it a little bit, and apparently it was it was cooked up by an LA cosmetic surgeon, um, and wow. they're basically building <laughs> only to order. Um, so, I mean, they're, from what I was reading, they're planning on selling these things. And, you know, it, it is kind of refreshing to see something, you know, so outrageously different. I mean, when I walked by it, you know, every time we moved from hall to hall, it was made me think that it should have sort of a, you know, a hot tub in the back or something. It was very L.A. It was, it was kind of perfect for where we were. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, at a price tag of $1.1 you know, we'll see. It's supposed to have a Corvette engine under the hood. Um, it sort of, it apparently takes a bunch of pieces from other cars, but, um, it'll, it, it, it was definitely a, a conversation starter uh, around the hall when we were we were hanging out. So yeah. I don't, I don't see. see you driving around that thing in New York for sure. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> okay, we're running almost out of time. Uh, we're talking to Abby Basse Heberman and Peter Valdez Ebena from CNNMoney.com. And uh, so I guess uh, all the audience can uh, go there and, and see all your coverage, right? There. Yep, you can check us out at CNNMoney.com. It's you go into personal finance and uh, click on autos, you'll see all of our coverage from the LA Auto Show. We've got everything from galleries and videos and, and personal takes from Peter. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff there, so check it out. Yeah, Peter, uh, the last question for you. Would you spend $499 a month to lease a Hyundai Tucson fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell? Uh, no, I probably <laughs> would not. I mean, it, I, 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 think, I think fuel cells are a fantastic idea. I think if the, if the infrastructure, if it were easy to get to a hydrogen fueling station, they make terrific sense because you get all the benefits of an electric car with the refilling time of a gasoline car. It takes only a few minutes to fill up with hydrogen, but you have complete emission-free driving. But at $499 a month, that's a lot to pay for a Hyundai Tucson. I think we have to wait for the price of something like that to come down before I'd be willing to spend my money just to make you know, the environmental statement. But I think, we're, I think we could get there, and I hope we do get there. So these hydrogen fuel cell cars... Do make a lot of sense. Yeah, it's gonna take a while uh, to to see that, but uh, it was uh, it was fun driving it. I, I did a little loop on it. So thank you very much again, Abby Bassett Hefferman and Peter Valdez Depena from CNNMoney.com for your time and uh, for sharing your impressions of the LA Auto Show. Thanks, Javier. Thank you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.